Yeah, what's up, guys? So just uh, we'll be running through a couple of pairs uh, of these down here. So we'll be just be taking you through what we're kind of looking for, kind of ideas, potential setups we're looking for. We'll show you some zones that we've got here on the charts. Um, won't be too long. Uh, so let's kind of dive straight into it. I'll start off here with obviously uh, we're looking at US 30. Um, so I'll give a couple of pairs, a couple of ideas that I have, and then we'll jump to Muhammad, who's going to show you guys sort of what he's what his outlook is. Uh, for the week and uh, that'll pretty much just be it so we'll dive straight into it we'll start off here with us 30 so we kind of see we had this nice drop uh towards sort of the end of the week you can see here on the daily time frame a couple of zones we could potentially look for we can see also on the weekly uh big big strong push to the downside now the weekly overview the us 30 is actually i think it's got a lot of potential movement to the downside if we have a look uh you can see obviously weekly is a very very big time frame so this could be you know obviously over a couple of weeks uh, maybe even, you know, comes up to a couple of months uh, for this big drop to happen, but it does look pretty clean to the downside. We have, we've been kind of due a retracement. Um, now, the one thing we need to keep in mind and with sort of the US 30 and any sort of indice pair is if it does drop, we can see it drops pretty quickly. Uh, so we could potentially struggle to uh, be able to fit in the trade here if it, if it does drop too fast. Obviously, we saw here, this doesn't really give you a lot of time to react. So obviously, look on the daily term time frames, looking at big drops, over here, you can see it doesn't really give you a lot of chance to kind of get into the market. We perhaps have maybe a bit of a hiccup here, a bit of a retest of a zone, but then you can see the break of the sort of support over here was pretty much with a gap and just continue to go to the downside, which is quite a dangerous trade. So uh, if we do happen to catch, I believe this, the, the move that we wanted to catch could have potentially been here at the top, uh, would have been a nice sort of entry to go into, obviously based on the double top, now pushing the downside. We do actually have a zone here as well. Um, you guys can see that we did break. So we'll see maybe, hopefully we can get a bit of a retest. I'm not sure if you, uh, what you think about that, Muhammad, but we can see potentially a bit of a retest to here and then obviously push the downside. Now, obviously when we look right here on the lower term time frames, like our four hourly, we'll see that these zones start to kick in quite strong. Um, so we'll see how that one plays out. We'll jump out. So obviously for US study, we want to see that retest potentially for myself. I want to see a retest that and then push it to the downside. Obviously, potential targets we can look for in a roughly about the 31, 500 mark for me will be a good area to push to. We do need to keep in mind here. Now, obviously, with this US 30, because this is sort of all time highs, if we do end up pushing to the top side, you know, we need to start looking at these round numbers for areas of uh, resistance where the market could stop, where you could look for potential take profit targets. Um, but to the downside, you know, we also can use these round numbers. We can see a lot of the support sort of areas come up around these round number areas. We've got this big uh, 32,000 well, 32, mark. And then obviously to the downside, we've got this 31,500 mark, which is the support that I'm initially looking for, that nice big support that I want to be able to push to if the market does give us that nice entry to the, uh, to the downside. Now, moving on to, I'll just clear the drawings. Moving on to your USD. I don't know if you had anything to say about that, Muhammad, if you wanted to um, have any input on that side. No, I totally agree. Um, I mean, looking at it, the way you were looking at it, top-down analysis, it's to taking it from the top and then just filtering it through the timeframes. I totally agree on that with the, the way you were doing that, marking out the zones that are actually key, especially the round numbers. They're something that you really want to keep your eye, on, eye out on as well. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty much, you know, we both kind of trade in a similar way. Uh, so we, you know, we have pretty identical views on the market. Now, uh, here, moving on to the Euro USD, we did actually spot something on the lower term time frame, but I just want to show you guys here on the higher term. Uh, we can see we did have not really a double top, but it was more of a bit of a multiple top. I think we can uh, maybe look at popping in a, let's see if this works here, if it does. So a bit of a trend line, not really. We did have that sort of break, but it kind of follows this area. Um, now, obviously, it's a weekly time frame, so it is a pretty big, big push if it does end up pushing yeah. the upside, which I think is pretty unlikely. But we actually, before we started the video, we saw a bit of a, a nice sort of move here. Um, Muhammad was actually talking about uh, sort of this area. So I think I'll I'll leave the US the Euro USD for him to break down uh, because it's actually, you know, it's a pretty nice pair. And I think, uh, you know, obviously he spotted, so I'll leave it up to you to to give us a bit of a view on it. So I'll pop up to the GPAUD. Uh, I think it looks quite messy here. Um, it's a pretty messy chart on the hourly time frame. So I'm not expecting too much of it. On the four hourly time frame, you can see it's still kind of messy. We might look for a, a break in a retest. But then again, we've got a bit of a contradicting view if we move up to the weekly, I believe. It's like a bit of a double top here. So 
we do have a pretty strong area of resistance slash support, lots of round numbers around here. Uh, so I think for the time being, for pound Aussie, uh, maybe just leave it alone, in my opinion. Um, unless you really also just trade the year, the Asian session, um, the pair is a bit of a difficult one to trade. Sometimes you get some good movement during the, the UK session. Um, but yeah, I think there's not really much. We've got a bit of a triangle perhaps sitting up here, uh, maybe consolidation. But I'll, I'll, ideally, I think I'll probably stay away from this one because we have two two views. We've got the break and the retest. And obviously, on the higher term time frame, we do have a bit of a double top. I'll show you here on the daily as well. You kind of see that a bit better. Um, so big double top. Nice works to the upside and obviously to the downside, we've got a lot of traffic to push into. So if we do push down, you know, if we if the market really does end up pushing down, we could perhaps look at, you know, I would say the earliest mark we want to look at is 81.83, um, um, which would be a nice, nice round number for the market to push to. We saw some previous support. You guys can see some of my old analysis I had here. Um, I had a bit of um, resistance slash support there. So that could be a pretty good idea for the market to. Uh, push down to there but if not um, I'm not really looking for anything until it breaks that high uh, obviously these spikes over here and we can look for a move to the upside um, move on to the pound yen pound yen looks pretty good uh, obviously it's going to be in a pretty similar situation than the pound Aussie because we do have the double top as well we can see it does look a lot cleaner the moves uh, look a lot more fluent uh, so perhaps we could use this as an internal support slash resistance area Kind of retest off and uh, use that strength to break past as high potential targets we could look for. I think um, if you want want to agree or disagree with me, well, I mean, we've got this sort of zone up here. I would say maybe what's it one one six two two hundred. I think would be a good idea to go to. Good area to go to. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, provided it breaks those other previous zones before that. Um, yeah. You could see it trend up to that level. Um, but no, honestly, what's this? Pound yen very volatile pair. You do see some mad movements from this one, so it wouldn't be any surprise if you. Yeah, I think I think you just uh, your I'm connection just dropped a bit. Say again, sorry. That, that could potentially go to that level. Yeah, so I think um, the one thing. Yeah, could you see that potentially go there? Yeah, so I mean that's the one thing, like you were saying before, that the pound yen is pretty volatile. So. The thing about the pound yen, once it starts moving, you can see it just doesn't doesn't really give you a second <laughs> chance. Uh, so you really need to be aware of it. So I think it's very important if you're looking to trade this pound yen, you need to be ready uh, once the UK session kicks in or perhaps Asian session. The one thing I've started to notice is the market actually does turn around during. So if we have like a downtrend during the, U the Asian session, um, we actually have a turnaround during the UK session. So Looking at the areas we're on right now, we know we, we can see we've got a pretty decent consolidation zone here that's coming up. Uh, so I think during the UK session, if we can get a get a retest of that zone, let's have a look on the hourly time frame. Uh, you can see it's already starting to reject that area, uh, so it could be a potentially good yeah. good time for us to you know start looking for a trade, start looking for some setups. I don't really. Uh, I've got an idea. I think this would be a good one. So I'll keep this in mind, but I don't really see anything. Obviously, guys, it is Monday. The whole purpose of this video is to kind of just take you guys through the market um, and kind of show you, you know, what zones you're looking for. Usually there won't be any trades on Monday, uh, but we'll keep yeah. you guys updated via our Instagram. Uh, so if you guys want to give us a follow there, um, Rhodium FX on this, Rhodium underscore FX. Uh, you guys can give us a follow over there and you, we'll keep you updated with the trades and setups that we do take. Obviously, right now we're in a nice zone, uh, but there's not really any any sort of entry that we have. Like, obviously, we had this beautiful sort of entry back here. Um, this is a nice sort of formation we have. We can see these three pins over here. Uh, close with this green candle above the high, uh, yeah, the high of the previous candle. Uh, so we can see that was a nice entry. So we got the one, two, three. Obviously, entry over there, take profit down at the low. And then obviously, we need our targets to have a, you know, this is a could have been a short-term target to a still a pretty decent trade uh, that could have been taken if this was a trade uh, that you were looking for. Like, I believe it's about a two to one, three to one risk reward ratio. Uh, so 2.3. And then obviously, if we look at our higher term time frames, because we do know it's sort of a consolidation sort of structure that we had there, and we can look for higher zones to push into. So now we can't see anything on the daily. So we've popped down over to the weekly, and we can see we had that double top sort of structure coming up, which is a pretty major resistance. That could have been a good target. And if you were had the sort of, you know, had the, this, I don't know if you want to call it the guts to hold it there, <laughs> uh, you can see it would have been a pretty decent trade if we popped down here on the 
on the lower term time frame, you can see it's actually a massive trade if you use those time frames. So five, five to one, five point three to one risk reward ratio for a pretty decent trade, nice entry. So this is sort of the structure I'm looking for. Uh, these kind of structures, even some consolidation over there, um, or you know, but this over here is a pretty nice turnaround point. So if we can see anything similar on this side over here, uh, that'd be a nice, that would be sort of ideal to get. Uh, if we get that sort of structure. Now, obviously, I'm only looking for those on the daily or the four hourly. Uh, the hourly I'll use for, you know, just to get an idea to see, okay, it's kind of starting to reject, but we see some sort of rejection close to the zone. So that's why I use the four hourly uh, to look for those potential entries. So if I see that structure on the four hourly, I'll start to enter. Now, the other one I want to show you guys, I did see something on gold. Um, and then we can, I'll pop it up, hand it over to Mohammed over here. Now, gold had a pretty strong drop, uh, similar with the USD CAD. Actually, you know, obviously USD CAD at a turnaround point. Um, this was a, a sort of I took two trades on USD CAD last week. Obviously, that loss, and then I got a nice win. Ended up going a bit further than I thought I would. So I took profit early and ended up continuing running. Uh, but it was a nice, I think I said three to one, four to one risk reward ratio on the trade. Yeah. But Sorry moving, trade, yeah, it was pretty a pretty decent trade. So the loss, you guys, obviously, I took a loss on the first time, um, which was fine. Uh, but obviously, we'll make it back. All about the risk reward ratio. So, uh, moving on. So, like I said, USD, USD gold. So, gold on the dollar. Um, so, we kind of see gold kind of reaching this. It almost looks a bit like a head and shoulders over here uh, that we can see reaching up. So, we kind of got the support slash resistance zone. We see a massive drop. Now, usually after big drops like this, the market will tend to take a break and kind of start creating some structure. So, we saw a big drop like we did over here. So form some structure, support flash resistance zones. Um, and then hopefully we can see uh, either some structure form here to break to the upside. Now, uh, looking at the, U the Euro USD, the Mohammed which uh, hopefully will break down to us. Uh, if the Euro USD obviously is going to fall, chances are the gold will fall. If the Euro, Euro USD goes up, chances are gold is going to you know, go up as well, depending on the strength of gold, whether it's gold that's changing price or whether it's the dollar changing price. So uh, I think well, I'll hand it over to Ahmad. Muhammad. I've spoken enough now as well. Uh, so I'll hand it over to you. Um, we'll just quickly share his screen and then you can <laughs> kind of go through everything. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's pop over. Okay, cool. So I'll just yeah. share the screen to you now. So I'll stop screen sharing. No yeah, so it's pretty simple. I don't know if I spoke too much, but you'll sh I'll stop sharing. And now you should have the option to, there you go, multiple screen shares. There you go, okay. Hold up, let me just get this up there now. Yeah, we're literally just talking about this. Um, we're looking at it on the one hour, but like I said, when we look at charts, we're gonna take it from the top. So, let's pull up the daily chart here. All right, yeah, you can just see that it was a steep decline in the euro dollar. Um, obviously, make sure you want to see that all the time frames align before we actually want to think about it. We pop down to the four hours, we can see that this zone over here, um, this zone over here, the four hours, such a significant zone that is very strong confirmation. So just losing a bit of connection here for us. So we'll just, uh, um, just while it's reconnecting, um, what I want to talk about, so I'm not sure if you guys saw that previous drop that happened in gold. Uh, so obviously I'm uh, pressed. Okay, cool, he's back. So <laughs> you just had a bit of a lag. So I thought I'll just take everyone through. Um, so on uh, on gold, we actually saw that drop. We saw the salmon on USD. So I don't know if you, if you, yeah, there you go. You're back again. All right, so just take us through this again, sorry. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just, where did I cut off from? Uh, quite a while back. So you kind of went from, I think it was the daily you were on. Okay, yeah. Taking it from the top, obviously you want to go from the daily and work yourself your way down and make sure that all your time frames align before you end up thinking about taking a trade, right? So starting from, from the daily, you could see that there was a steep uh, decline, straight downtrend in the euro dollar. Bring it down to the four hours, you can see that it actually ended up did breaking a significant zone that we highlighted over here. Now, if we pull it down to the one hour, we can see something really interesting happen. We can see two tests before and then a break. Now, what could potentially happen is we could see a pattern form here, or we can see it come back to this persistence downside. That's what I was thinking. That's what um, I would be in. Yeah, I think it's pretty like pretty important how you said 
uh, that like if you're looking for you know looking at the multiple time frames um you can kind of see that everything's kind of pointing to the downside yeah. so uh, i think our bias will probably be to the downside now obviously i don't really look at the third yeah. minute so i can see uh, let's have a listen so it could be pretty interesting now that's one thing difference i don't look at the 30 minutes so i'll be keen to hear what you have to say uh, about the 30 minute time frame here on uh, on this dollar yeah obviously when you bring it down to tend to get less clean but you can still see a very similar picture here um obviously no traffic here if you look to the left there's not really anything stopping the price so what i would ideally looking looking at is a test on that resistance at the one eight nine hundred level for it to find for a further push on the downside yeah <laughs> yeah can you pop it on the just pop it on the um file time frame quickly if you don't mind um so i just want to show you guys yeah. um if you don't, yeah so there's that structure that i was talking to before if you can zoom in a bit more there we go so um you guys that structure i was speaking about um about those three points you can kind of see a similar which is a pretty good indication. I'll see if I can get my annotation up here. So we just hold it still there. So you can kind of see the similar sort of pattern here. So we've got the, the three sort of pins that we have on this side, and obviously the one closing below here. I'm not. This one's a little bit iffy because it does kind of overtake that. So usually what I want to see is I want to see kind of the, the middle pin be the highest, and then, you know, the next one sort of being the lowest, and then taking out that, the previous low or the previous structure, the other one. Uh, so we do kind of see that, that forming over here. We did see uh, a similar structure here as well, which was quite nice. This one's quite nice because we do see, although the wicks aren't that big, where we see the one, uh, two and the massive one at the three, and then obviously this one takes out the low of that previous yeah. candles open. So that was a nice indication, you know, to entry over here, stop loss above, and obviously take profit depending on where it was to go. But the nice thing that gold, that this year USD gave us as well, was that nice sort of structure? If you look on the higher term time frame, you'll see we had that. Um, it was a bit of a double top. So if you pop onto the daily, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, for sure. And I mean, the main thing that you're looking at, if you want to break it down even further, is you just want to see exhaustion in the price. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think I think that's a slow down for a bit. Yeah, that's a pretty good that's point. That's yeah. taking our trades. Yeah, so I mean, what usually what you, we usually look for in exhaustion is we kind of see this sort of curve structure. Uh, so it kind of you'll, usually you'll see the market start moving it strongly and you start to see it kind of create you know a bit of slowing down so you see usually like i said that curve that we see over there now if you do like to use indicators uh you can usually use something like a MACD. and what you'll usually see is we see us what we call a divergence we know we see a push to the upside so our, our top trend line is pushing up and the trend line here on the the sort of any sort of volume indicator will kind of show two different. So we see up movement over here and a down movement over here. Now yeah. that's the divergence that we could be looking for. But for us to make it easy and simple, I don't really like looking at indicators. It just clouds your mind. I like to see the sort of curve structure to give it an idea that the market is starting to push down. Now we can start to see all the moves that the market is trying to push back up are a lot slower compared to the moves that the market is pushing down into. And obviously eventually we get that nice big drop to the downside. Um, and then also I just want to have a look at the news as well I think it's uh, we don't really have a lot of I'm not sure if you can pop on your your uh, your calendar Mohammed. Um, my I, so I usually use um, Forex Factory I've never really used uh, my FX book for news um, so I'm pretty unfamiliar with this one but from memory we do have yeah, lot of it's Euro news and UK news coming out so if you want to sort of take it away I know we've got a lot of uh, you know we've got the um, the bank speaking, so we'll see if they're dovish or hawkish. So depending on that, you know, we could see some potential uh, reactions to the market. Now, I think speaking for both of us, we don't really use the news to trade because I find I find it's quite dangerous. I'd rather use the news to um, just have an idea of what's if, if the market I mean, is going to be lively or whether I should stay away. Yeah, or yeah, that that's a very important point. You don't necessarily want to rely on trading. For yeah, sorry, you just lost a okay, wait. Yeah, just lost some connection there again. Sorry, Robert. Yeah, Say again. I have to fix. <laughs> I'm getting... Yeah, um, you you don't really want to rely on one too much. Um, you you want to like bridge the gap between the two, so you can just refer to both, but also be, for my for my opinion, a technical trader instead of just a fun fundamental trader. Sort of just want to like refer to the news now and again to know when you can stay in and out of positions mm -hmm. and not totally rely on it as 
as trading strategy. I'm sure there's other people out there that trade solely based on the news, <laughs> but um, it it just it just depends from person to person, really. Yeah, personally, I think trading with the news is a very, you know, it's very um, stressful in my opinion because you never, you know, for me, the chart tells you the story. You know, if you look at the chart, it tells you, you know, whether the, whether it wants to go up or whether it wants to go down. I think uh, for me personally, like I said, the news is just an idea to see, yeah. well, is this market going to be, you know, extremely volatile, uh, usually during big news events, especially during your NFP announcements. Um, you know, there's usually not a lot of volume in the market. Uh, so, or you get volume spikes and drops in volume, so you can't get slipped a lot. So, I try to kind of steer away um, from these. Unless you know, some people trade NFP. I used to trade NFP, you know, a while back. I was quite, I quite enjoyed trading it, but now I'm kind of more into the, you know, let's just chill out and uh, secure some profits early in the week, <laughs> uh, kind of thing. But you know, I think like one would say, you know, there has to be a bridge between both. Um, obviously. Like he's there, there's some people who rely more on news than technicals, which I find is just way too stressful. Um, and I like the hair on my head, so I prefer not to. Um, so I think uh, for personally, like we said, we both kind of just stick to stick to the technicals and use the news or the fundamentals to just have an idea of, you know, are we in danger? Um, or, you know, will this week kind yeah. of be smooth sailing? From what I can see, it looks like it's fairly smooth sailing. Um, you can see the only big events are, you know, I can't. I don't know really. How, don't really know what I'm looking at on this on this one. But I know uh, we've got some euro news coming up. We've got some pound news coming up uh, later um, in the week. President. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. What we, yeah. But like, really, guys, nothing much. Nothing too dangerous this week. Um, just be aware of the news. So if you want to either use my fix book like I was using, or I like to use uh, Forex Factory. Um, either one's fine for you. If you've got a Forex factory, just click on the calendar. Um, it's pretty easy to, you know, that kind of shows on the news there as well and when it releases. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. If you want to go back to the charts, I think do we, don't, we don't really have anything else to speak about. Um, pretty much covered most of it. I mean... Unless there's something you wanted to say? I mean, it really just depends. I mean, if you're a trader that finds a strategy that works with the news and you're having fun and you're, you're profitable, then do what you got to do you know you mm -hmm. don't let us say don't trade the news stop you it just comes down to the type of trader you are and um yeah although which we do break down more in the course that we have but yeah that's pretty much the basic market reviews for the week coming up um definitely post a couple of highlights on our instagram stories Easy. showing the calls that we are making yeah so exactly like you said guys so what we'll be doing we'll be posting on instagram uh you know a couple of every you know every almost every day we'll have a couple of posts on there we'll have some updates on you know trades we'll be looking at obviously we'll be following up on the analysis we did if we do get trades like i mentioned i'm looking for uh, sort of that buy uh, potential buy on that one okay so um yeah i think i'll just because i think it was losing connection so i just want to quickly take guys through this pound yen actually pound yen looks a lot better so pound yen we're looking for that potential move to the upside hourly time frame we can see starting to reject for our time frame, I'm looking for that structure, like I mentioned, you know, some of the structures to here. So I think that is pretty pretty much it, guys. We'll keep you updated on Instagram. This will probably be the one for me. Yeah. <laughs> you did disconnect. Yeah, that's why I just reconnected my screen. Um, so we'll look for potential trades. <laughs> I think mostly I'll be focusing on pound pound yen at the stage. Um, nothing much else. US 30, I also quite like a trade, but again, you know, there's not much uh, big drop. We, sort of at a support slash resistance zone so we'll need to see but i think my uh my favorite out my favorite looking trade right now is this pound yen so we'll see if we get any sort of rejection candles here i'll i mean if you want to take the trade now you can you know it's a pretty good zone to take it but i'm going to wait <clears throat> on my four hour time frame to see if i do see any uh, sort of structural you know candle structures or any sort of consolidation structures yeah, definitely. um but yeah that's it for me guys i'll keep you I'll, we'll keep it on the i don't know if there's anything you want to pop in there Mohammed, but we'll keep everyone updated on the instagram uh and we'll, then we'll take it from there so was there anything you want to to add to that yeah no definitely i agree with you um stay tuned to the instagrams and yeah easy keep all right guys well stay tuned and uh, trade safe <laughs>